Welcome to the GCN Tech Show, and I'm Alex Payton. And I'm Dr. Oliver Bridgewood. Coming up this week, we've got new bikes, new helmet, new shoes, and some super fast aero clothing. And because one of those new bikes has got some pretty revolutionary tech behind it, well, we thought we'd take a closer look. Let's do it. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. What do we have, Ollie? Uh, should you ride with, with your shifters angled sort of in aero style like pros do, or should you not, basically? Yeah. Um, and, well, 78% of the viewers said no, leave it to the pros. Do you do it? No, I don't. I don't. No, I'm not a pro. No, <laughs> neither am I. So we've also got some great news as well. We've got the winners of our Wahoo competition to announce. So the winner That's of... good prize this, isn't it? Oh, good prize. The winner of the Kick and Roller is Charles Capdeville. And the winner of the Powerlink Zero dual side pedals is Jones Lincoln. Now... Oh, well done. Yeah, yeah. Good, well done. And regarding your prizes, we'll be in contact directly via email, which leads on to the next important point because We've had a number of sort of uh, people trying to make it confusing about how to claim your prize and stuff. So the important thing to do for any of our competitions is only enter by clicking on the link in the description of the YouTube video. And if you are a lucky winner, we'll contact you directly via email. We're never going to ask you to just WhatsApp us. That's yes. a bit weird. Um, the, the bat, there are baddies out there. Yeah. We're on to you, baddies. And you're not going to win. And what they're doing is sometimes leaving comments under videos or they're saying WhatsApp people about prizes. This is fake, it's fraudsters. So um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get you. Hmm. <laughs> Should we talk about our new bike? Yeah, main talking point. Okay, yeah, so this is a new bike from Le Monde and um, with Greg Le Monde being the only, or only American to win the Tour de France. He won it three times? Well, it's controversial that you say he's the only American to ever win the Tour de France, but we won't go there. Um, <laughs> anyway, he's just he's he's launched um, a brand new bike. So Le Monde mm. bike sort of had a bit of hiatus, been away for a while, but now it's come back with this. It's called the Eight, and according to Le Monde, it's the most transformative change in carbon fibre bike manufacturing since carbon was first used in bikes around 30 years ago. It's got some pretty interesting design ideas and features to it, so we thought we'd take a closer look at those. Starting with the forks, I guess, because these stand out because it would appear that the steerer tube is square rather than round. WTF? Wow, that's fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so well, I mean, it kind of kind of makes sense why you might have a, a square a square yeah. tube. It's designed to fit onto a proprietary bar and stem that comes with it. But also by having that square shape, it means it's well, it's pretty much impossible to get your your stem on wonky. Yeah, you that's just, a good point. You just get it straight every time. And so one way it's going to go. On. Although yeah. you, you could have it like ninety degrees off, but you'd, you'd notice that <laughs> yeah. pretty much straight away when you Hank wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely would. So looking at the fork, you can see that these sort of ribbed structure runs all the way up the inside, presumably to add strength to the steerer. And there's an internal thread which runs all the way through, and that's where your headset top cap would thread into. And by using this system, it does away with that internal wedge which your traditional steerer has. And and also, it's also at this point where you can see you've got that foam core on the inside. Mm. Hmm. It uses an ultra lightweight dual expanding foam called Xenocore. And so Le Mans also reckon that by using this foam core, they can make the frame stronger, more durable, and better absorbing and reducing those road vibrations that you feel through the bike. Although this is according to Le Mans because we haven't had the luxury of riding the bike. No, no. That's, that's not all though. The, the threads on, on the frame, so yeah. where the headset is and also the bosses for the bottle cage mounts, yeah. they're all carbon. What? all built in. So there's no uh, metal or alloy inserts placed in, or hardware placed in for those components. Wow. And this is because, well, according to Le Monde, it makes the frame lighter and also carbon is stronger than, than an alloy, but then you avoid potential corrosion issues, which can cause frames mm. to fail further down the line when alloy parts in contact with carbon parts can corrode and What stuff. about the bottom bracket though? Is that um, threaded? Uh, it's threaded and, and carbon, carbon as well. Wow. It's a threaded T47 bottom bracket standard, and it's made the shell from what Le Monde describes as a, a lattice 
construction mm. technique. I've got some other interesting bits of information here for you. So this bike is an aero bike. It's available in disc and electronic shifting options only, but you have got clearance for up to 32 millimeter wide tires. And you wanna know the price? Yeah. $12,500 or 13,900 euros for a complete bike. And that's one built up with Shimano Durace Di2. Yeah, top uh, yeah. spec build. Uh, it's available with two colours as well, the, the nice blue mm. we've shown and also a sort of Tour de France yellow and grey affair. I, I think they both look rather nice. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Um, cool bonus fact for you. Oh, I love a bonus fact. Yeah. Do you know why it's called the 8? No, I don't. It's a reference to Le Mans' victory over Laurent Fignon in Ooh. the 1989 Tour de France. Oh, lovely. When he used tri bars and he won by eight seconds. Nice little bonus fact. Yeah, I like that. Bonus. Anyhow, that's sort of some of the information about the bike, but we want to know what you think of it. So let us know in the comments section down below and head over to the GCN app and vote on whether you think this bike is hot or not. And we'll let everyone know next week. Yeah. I think, I, I'm going to go hot. Yeah, yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. It's now time for hot tech, and then first up this what, week. Before we crack on with hot tech, yeah. we should just do a shout out to the Global Bike Festival, which is oh, happening yeah? in Salbach in Austria on the 16th of June to the 19th. So, we've, yeah, some of you may have heard of it already, but we know plenty of you haven't yet, and it's just going to be mega. So, it's a massive festival for cyclists. It's, it's GMBN, it's GCN, it's EMBN. So, you've got road cycling in like fantastic mountain oh. location, but also mountain biking, e-mountain biking. Gravel bikes. Gravel. Oh. And then, because it's just a, a festival um, for cyclists, it's gonna be loads of sort of like-minded people, but there's music, entertainment, GCN food, pub quiz. GCN oh. pub quiz. Yeah. Lloydie will be there. Oh. So there'll be loads of us there. So yeah, um, if you if it sounds like something you're interested in, 16th, 19th of June, check it out. We've got a website. Um, should we carry on hot tech now? Do it, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Right, so this is the new Giro Eclipse. It launched last week, I think. So a few little features on this helmet which are pretty interesting. We've got this spherical design here which allows the different layers of the helmet to slide, yeah. helping to try and protect your head in impacts. Now, Giro say this is their fastest road helmet that they've tested. Which what? is a pretty bold claim. Oh, tell me more. Yeah, so you've got 14 wind tunnel optimised vents on here. You've got the ones at the front channeling air into your head and the ones at the rear drawing that airflow out to try and provide the most optimum cooling that they can. Oh, it looks good on you actually. Thanks. Yeah, so Giro have tested this in the wind tunnel and also they've got a um, very sophisticated artificial head which monitors and measures the cooling very effectively. So they say not only is Don't it- they call that the Therminator? I think they might do, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not only is it their fastest road helmet, it also provides possibly some of the best cooling that they've had for some of the helmets. Weight of this helmet, I've got it right here in front of me. 275 grams in a size medium, and the pricing is 239.99 in um, British pounds. Well, the Le Monde bike is not the only hot new bike oh, it's not, out it, this no. week. Ducati has also launched a road bike. So yes, the revered uh, Italian manufacturer of some of the most desirable and highest quality motorcycles in the world is, is now making a road bike. And it's an e-bike and it's available in two different versions. You've got normal and then you've got the special edition one as well. Now unusually, it comes with the FSA K-Force Wii group set. Yeah, and many bikes I, come with it. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool though. Like yes, yeah, it does look cool, but for me, it doesn't look as cool as a 916. I don't know what that is. 916, the iconic Ducati, oh, okay. came out, well, available in sort of 1995, Desmondromic V4 engine. Also has Ooh. the exhausts, like, hidden under the back seat. I mean, that's a brilliant design. But the coolest bit for me is the swing arm design of the rear wheel, which gave you that, the, not from the non-drive side, the rear wheel is, like, completely exposed and doesn't have, like, a fork blade onto it. I can see that. I'm looking at some it's pictures. It's so there. cool. And I just think... Oh, it would be nice for some of that design language to be fed into their bikes a bit, like into their road bikes. I mean, like the cycling equivalent is maybe like a Cannondale lefty fork that just holds the wheel from one side. It's like yeah. really cool. So I don't know. That for me, I was like, oh, I'd quite like them to do something like that. From my quick bit of research, I can tell you it's got a top speed of 161 miles an hour. The e-bike or the... <laughs> the Ducati. Um, the 916. Yeah, the motorbike. Mm. Um, so the e-bike uh, also has the FSA rear hub motor in it. Um, the price of this bike for the normal version, you're looking around £7,400. However, jump up to the special edition model and you've only got what? 
you don't got one, but there's up to 50 models available. These are built up with Campagnolo Super EPS. Super record EPS. Yeah, it? so really, I really fancy. They weigh just around... 12 and a half kilos. Oh, you took a word straight out of my mouth, thanks. But, cost of these things, you're looking around 12,000 pounds. Pricey, mm. pricey. Next up in hot tech, we've got a new skin suit from a company called Rule 28. So this is a relatively new company that has grown off the success of making aero socks. Now, quite a lot of pros were spotted using these in place of their team regulations or standard ones because they offer a significant aerodynamic advantage. But they've also moved on to developing other items of clothing too, which leads us to the skin suit, which I think is called the Neo TT suit. Yeah, hmm. interesting bit of kit this. It's been designed using science, maths, and the Silverstone Sports Performance Wind Tunnel. And uh, for me, the, the most sort of interesting tech detail about it is that it's designed to be used in conjunction with a base layer. Huh? Yeah, so do you, this is because, right, so do you remember the encapsulator skin suit that yeah. Alex Dowsett used in, to had break the hour record? The silicon chevron bits over yeah, it. Yeah, it was mm. made by Endura, had these little silicon bumps on it in key places, particularly on the arms, and the idea with these is they trip the airflow um, and therefore sort of main, keep it turbulent and then the wake is decreased behind your smaller your weight, the less mm. drag you have, uh, and therefore you go faster. Uh, Castelli also made a suit that used similar ideas. It had little bumps on the arms and stuff. You may remember Team Sky, uh, as they were then, using it. Uh, Froome in Time Trials of the yeah. Giro, I recall. Uh, but the UCI didn't like this, and they banned it. Of course, of course they did. Quite typical. Yeah. Um, so, to get around this, yeah. Rule 28 has got this sort of lumpy special base layer that you wear underneath and then the bumps point through the skin suit. Because base layers aren't banned. Yes, because the UCI hasn't banned base layers yet. Um, and, well, they've tested the suit with and without the use of the base layer. Mm. And according to them, it's significantly faster with the, with the base layer. So at 50 kilometers an hour, which is time trialing speed, yeah. um, with naught degrees yaw, they reckon it's around 11 watts faster. That's um, significant, isn't it? Yeah, which which, which is yeah. If you're if you're into time trialing, and you know you're trying to ride fast time trials. It's the first a lot. time I've seen yeah like a base layer and suit designed to work together. So it's mm. an interesting concept. Yeah. Mm, cool. like that. Next up, I've got some tech observations from Strada Bianca. I was watching it on the weekends on um, GCN Plus. Did you watch it? It was, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Do you know what? I thought the women's race was better than the men's. I'm definitely going to agree with you, yeah. actually. Um, and whilst it was outrageous, like outrageous to see Pogaccia just ride away from everybody, the, um, like the excitement at the end of the women's race, way, way better. Yeah. yeah um, but good. what I did spot, talking about um, Tale Pogaccia, was two things I want to point out. Firstly, I think, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, I think he was the first person to ever win Strada Bianchi on tubeless tyres. Yeah, you might, I think you might be right. Pirelli P0 TLRs they were. And I also spotted, um, he's using some DMT shoes, the KRSLs I think they are, but they're not the standard ones, so they do make them in a white version. But the ones he's got, I've got white all the way up the whole shoe rather than a little black section around the top. And he's opted for white lace as well. Proper. That's it's nice. smart, aren't they? Yeah, very, very smart. smart. Like that. Plus he's Pogaccia, so when they get dirty in Strada Bianchi, he gets another pair. Yeah, probably just has a fresh to every race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish I had that. <laughs> Finally, in hot tech this week, our friends over at Castelli have launched a Strava challenge to help celebrate the monuments. It starts on the 7th of March. And, well, the first monument being Milan-San Remo on the 19th of mm. March. Uh, it's 293 kilometres. So the challenge isn't to ride that. No, no, no. Goodness. You, in minutes. Yeah, minutes, it's yeah. to ride 293 <laughs> minutes. That's pretty cool. A lot more achievable for most people. I mean, riding 293 kilometres, I mean, you did it not that long ago, but for me, pff, no, no. It's, an, it's a no from me. <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching the race, though, are you? Yeah, Van Art, I reckon. Um, I don't have a clue I'm going to pick. I'm going to hold back my judgment for that. All right. Yeah. More hot tech next week. See ya. Time now for the best bike shop in the world this week, according to us, uh, where you basically submit um, a local bike shop that's uh, well, close to you that you want to celebrate. We want to celebrate local bike shops, the core of the cycling community. Who have we got this week, This Alex? week we have got a Wolfies from the UAE. Actually, a shop which I rode past when I was out in the UAE. 
Can you believe that? Just before it opened, actually. So I've got some of the pictures and information here. So Wolfie's is one of the biggest bike shops in the region. And according to whoever submitted this, they say it's the best bike shop to visit. They've got four shops. They've got loads of cool brands. And basically, you can find anything you need there. It looks say, incredible. It does concept. incredible. They say their customer service is top notch. Yeah, pretty it, cool. I mean, it looks like it just—it looks like the, the the biggest, most spacious, high-end bike shop I've ever seen. I mean, it looks like a fancy department store. It's the most fancy pants bike shop we've had submitted yet. Isn't it, it is, yeah. Um, well, that it, it does look like an incredible place if you if you're down in the UAE. So this one um, here is on Huduria Island, and that's where there's a really cool purpose-built cycle facility. So presumably. They're going to get loads of customers through the door being based there. Yeah. I mean, you're based on a cycle circuit. How cool is that? I mean, it looks, it looks ginormous. Yeah. It really does. Cool. Well, if I'm in the UAE, mm. I'll, I'll stop by Wolfie's. Maybe next time when we visit for the race. I think we should get a map set up for, oh. like, for this segment mm. where we can like have a, a virtual map where we pinpoint the, the, the shops featured. Well, we better get started soon because we've already had, what, four or five Yeah, we need to get a few in. Um, well, I'll work on that in right. spare time. Do it. <laughs> cool. It's now time for the bike vault. It's my favourite part of the show. This part of the show, we quite simply judge pictures that you've uploaded to the GCN app to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, I ring the bell. Yeah, right. Here we got first this week. Um, this is the most super nice bike last week. And the GCN app. Oh, I like this. Oh, it's a, it's a Colnago C64 with a special sort of custom paint way on it. I'm, I'm super nice in this. Yeah. All right, super Easy. nice. Easy. Next up, um, um, who have we got here? It's a Villa, Run? A Villa, Villa Cento Dieci. Oh, I like this. Oh, interesting. Um, we've it's got, got the new Shimano on it. It's also got the new um, Bora, Bora Ultra wheels. wheels. Yeah. Those Bora Ultra wheels are nice, aren't they? They are very, this is a very bling looking bike. Although he's not. It's, wheels aren't aligned, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go super nice. Going for it? Yeah. On. Yeah. I'll. I'll agree. Yeah. A, bit of a ropey ring there. Simon Smedley. Is, what have we got uh, here? He's, Oro he's, Venturi. Yes. Oh, I like Oro the colours. Oro Venturi disc. That's a cool paint job, isn't it? Has it got blue wheels? Is it a blues of a tint to them? Yeah. I don't know. There's Another Altegra, new new Altegra group. The there. new Shimano. How are these people getting all this? I don't know how they're getting hold of it, yeah. Maybe there isn't a part shortage. Even, even pro teams can't <laughs> yeah. get hold of it. These guys yeah. are getting hold they're of it. They're taking the lot. I'll tell you what he hasn't been able to get hold of, though. Shadow Ron Seal. Stand. He hasn't got a shadow stand. Or Ron Seal. <laughs> oh, for his fence. Look at, look at his fence. Yeah. That is in serious need of some, of some TLC. TLC. Yeah. I mean, it's, that wood's just not going to survive a couple more winters unless you get that coated, my friend. No. Uh, other than the valves not being aligned, I like this bike. Yeah, I think we, I think we can, I think we can super nice that one. We're super nice that. Yeah, yeah we're on the speed plays on there as well. Like um, um, who we got next? A Sonda Camino aluminium by Beaumont Jail. Can't say I'm familiar with this kind of bike, but it's looking good. What are we sort of like a gravel sort of do it all all road kind of bike? It is. It's it's, it's been pictured next to a strange sheet with stains on it and and also i just take issue with the fact that the the bike is not fully visible it's a nice bike and i think it is super nice potential but it's, the fact yeah. that, it, that it's cropped in the photo I, I, I can't. um and if you're gonna hang a sheet up like that i mean you could have ironed it yes yeah is your iron broken yeah um i can't talk and often my iron is broken yeah i've, I've never nice. anything <laughs> um yeah, okay, just a nice. Next up is Norm 7311 with a custom steel Don frame. Walker. A Don Walker. A Don Walker. Another brand I'm not familiar with. What do you make of that? Um, I like it. Oh, it's a super nice. Yeah? Done. Oh, you, all right. Super nice. Uh, a TI Cycles Road from Kyle Allen Huss. Ooh. Oh, check this out. Cool background as well. That this is bike a cool is incredible. Background. This is a, oh, this is a, whoa. Oh. It's got the original. I'm lost for words. Original DI2 on it as well. If you look, can you see the DI2 battery, the external old boy one? Oh, yeah. Underneath the. The old boy one. <laughs> underneath the uh, the bottle cage there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Like big, the, uh, big deep rims in it. Yeah. No messing. That's a, that's. We got that super is, nice that one. That we? is super nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
super nice. Like it a lot. It's a, it's a strong week. We, I feel like we went through that quick, but yeah. they were just so good. Yeah, strong week. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have uh, and you found it informative and useful, <laughs> then please uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And we're going to go now. Also, make sure you check out Milan San Remo on oh, GCN+. Plus. I was going to remind people to vote on the app because I want to hear everyone's thoughts on that new bike. Oh, yeah, I should mm. do that. Mm. Right, see you later. Should we get a sandwich? <laughs>